Okay, uh, Kroiso Paub, Prynhawn Da, welcome everybody uh, and good afternoon. I can see that people are still uh, coming into the session, so um, I'm sure that um, everybody will continue to join us, but we're going to kick off now because it's two minutes past. So first of all, can I just say that I'm delighted to be uh, hosting this webinar today and would really like to thank all of our partners, all of our speakers, our team for organising this, but particularly thanks to you for attending and, and giving up your time this afternoon to talk to us about um, if you're thinking about a career uh, in nursing. So my name's Alex Howells and I'm the Chief Executive of Health, Education and Improvement Wales. And as the Strategic Workforce Body for Wales, our job is to ensure that we're developing the future workforce that our NHS organisations need in Wales in order to support the health of our population and the delivery of excellent care. And amongst other things, we are responsible for planning and commissioning education and training across many different professions with our NHS and university partners and for promoting the benefits of working in NHS Wales to attract and retain staff. So career decisions are so important, aren't they? And um, I can I can say that now with the benefit of 34 years experience in the NHS um, and to think about what I've learned during that time. And I suppose, you know, one of the things we have to think about when we're thinking about a career is that when you go into work, you want that to be a really meaningful thing to do. And, and yes, it's about earning money and we all want to do that. But really, the work that we do in our in our lifetimes is about so much more than that. And it really gives you a sense of meaning. It gives you a sense of pride. Um, it can be a great way of meeting colleagues and making lasting friendships. And it also means that if you're in the right career, you'll never stop learning. Um, and that's a really great place to be. So it's really, really important to do proper research on what you are going to find motivating and rewarding as a future career. Definitely worth investing time in that. And on top of all of that, a career in the public services does make a different offer because what that's got is the extra dimension of contributing to something that's so important to our people and communities across Wales. Um, but obviously within the public services, the NHS is the best part to be. Um, the NHS is a huge employer uh, and it's everywhere, providing diverse and wide ranging opportunities in terms of professions and career pathways. And as I said, having worked here for 34 years, um, I can absolutely guarantee that it's a fast paced environment to be working in, always running to keep up with advances in treatments and technologies, to respond to the different needs of our population and our patients, and to do all of that by making the best use of taxpayers' money in a politically turbulent environment. And that's a challenge and a half, but it's also an absolute privilege to be part of that NHS team that delivers for our communities and for our patients 24 hours a day, seven days of the week, 365 days of the year. And I definitely wouldn't change a day. But today's session is particularly for anyone thinking about joining the nursing profession, whatever your starting point, whether you're a graduate or perhaps a more mature person thinking about changing career. And the nursing profession, of course, is part of the bedrock of the NHS. It's the largest part of our workforce and a vital part of the multi-professional team. And you may think you already know what a nurse does, but I would say think again. Nurses play so many different roles in all services and settings, and these are set to evolve and develop at pace to take advantage of new technologies and models of care. And I know that you're going to find out all about that today because we are fortunate to be joined by some experts in the field, as well as some nursing students to give you an inside perspective on what it means to be a nurse and what you can expect from a career in this profession in the NHS. So, Diolch Pau, I really hope you enjoyed the session. I really hope it enthuses you to join us in the NHS and to consider your future career in the nursing profession. And I'm going to hand over now to Angie Oliver to take you through the rest of the event. So thank you very much, Diolch. Diolch, Alex, and uh, welcome everyone to, to this event. We're delighted to be able to run it today. Um, and as Alex said, we've got a, a number of extremely um, interesting speakers. So the first part of today, we're going to hear from our guests, which we'll introduce to you in a, in a moment. And then there'll be a bit of a gap. Um, and you will, in the sort of five, five minutes break or so, if you want to put in some questions um, that you'd like us to pick up on, uh, please do. You're 
your chat won't be visible to the rest of the um, audience. So there'll be somebody behind the scenes answering, hopefully, as you as you ask questions. Um, but also we may pick some of the, the themes of the questions uh, to make some of our question and answer session at the end of the event as well. Um, so we're going to look at some personal stories on, on what it means to be a nurse and, and what it's like, but also some help if you are thinking of applying for nursing, you know, what are the universities looking for and how we can potentially help you strengthen your applications. So um, with no further ado, I think if we can um, start on our first session, which is sort of thinking about nursing as a career, and we're going to ask um, some questions of the panel. Um, I will just briefly introduce the panel to you. So we are delighted to have our Chief Nursing Officer uh, with us, Sue Tranka, and it's delighted to have you in, in uh, this session with us. And also Tara Rees, who is currently the RCN Nurse of the Year. Um, so some fantastic um, experienced nurses. And also, as Alex mentioned earlier, we have two student nurses as well, um, Oliver and Jay with us, who are gonna share what it's like in that first year of uh, university training to be a nurse. So we've got a few questions uh, for you guys. Um, I'm going to start off with an easy one and I'm going to come to you um, in, in turn. And um, Sue, I wonder if uh, you would share, please, just a little bit about your career journey. And Tara, I'm going to ask you the same question. And uh, for um, Oliver and Jay, obviously, you know, why did you want to become a nurse? So that's going to be the question for you, just to give you a little bit of time to think about it. So uh, Sue, if I could come to you, please tell us a little bit about you and your career journey, please. And it's absolutely inspiring because I've heard this before. So <laughs> thank you. Dear Angie, uh, Prananda, uh, Kroisu, welcome to everyone uh, on this call. It's wonderful to have you all join us. Uh, as Angie said, my name is Sue. I am the Chief Nursing Officer for Wales and I work for the Welsh Government and I have an NHS role as a Nurse Director as well. I have been incredibly fortunate to be a nurse. Um, I've got a 31 year history in nursing. So not as much as Alex that introduced, but nearly there catching up. So 31 years, but I've had a, a, a career across the globe. I started nursing and my career started out in Southern Africa, so in sub-Saharan Africa, and I trained in the time of another pandemic, by the way. I trained during the HIV and AIDS epidemic in Africa, which was incredible training, learning, deeply challenging, drew on tons of your resilience and really, I think, set the foundations for um, the power and the strength uh, and leadership that comes through nursing. I have worked uh, for the King of Dubai. I always say I'll tell you guys that story at some point, but I must tell you that story at some point. So I was recruited by the King of Dubai and asked to work for him for a bit. I went to America and I've worked as, um, I worked in a voluntary hospital over there. And then I've worked in the United Kingdom, both in England and now in Wales. I trained many years ago as a general nurse I trained as a midwife. I trained in all the fields of nursing, so mental health, learning disability and children's. Um, and I trained as a community nurse. So that was simply just the training where I, where I was in South Africa. It was a diploma level training. So four diplomas that we, we qualified with and obviously qualified as a midwife and absolutely loved my career. I worked from urban, to rural um, and in really, really rural settings that give you a sense of working with uh, tribal communities out in Southern Africa, to working with small villages, to working in deeply urban areas, which are really the CBDs. I've worked in clinics, I've worked in prisons, I've worked in forensic healthcare, which was incredibly exciting. I have been a nurse consultant by background, that's an advanced practice nurse. Um, I have been in management, I sat at a board table, I've been an executive, and now I'm the head of profession for the entire profession in Wales for the 40,000 nurses and midwives. So, whew, what a career, right? Um, but but what, what I will tell you is that nursing for me 
has been my passport to the world. So what I learned in nursing and what I have gained through my experience and my education um, has been able to take me anywhere. I could transfer into anywhere in the world. I don't want to. I really want to work in Wales. This is the best place to be. Um, but to be a Welsh nurse would be to to have your passport to the world and it helps you to to um, I think go wherever you want, get experience wherever you want, come home, stay with us and go into so many different directions. So I've got from an educational perspective, I was just thinking what Alex said earlier. One of the things that you are never short of in nursing is the ability to learn and the ability to gain an education. So I've gone from having four diplomas to a degree, two masters, many, many other leadership programs behind me. And the world is my oyster as far as education is concerned. Um, it's it, There's lots of opportunity to learn whilst on the job. You learn outside the job. You can learn in formal institutions or informal institutions. You make it your own. That's the thing about nursing is that it's not in control of you. You are in control of your, of your career and you set your direction. You decide where you want to go. You determine how far you want to go. And it's not an easy career. That's the thing I do want to say. It is a challenging career. It can be really difficult, but it is so incredibly rewarding on so many and so many areas. Um, I always say uh, nursing has made me. It's made me the person I am today. It's made me the leader I am. It's made me the compassionate and kind but firm individual I am too. Um, and I think you need to have that to do this job right. But would I, if I had another choice, would I choose another career? And the answer is a resounding no. And I've had an opportunity, as I said before, for those of you that have heard me, I've gone to medical school to do a couple of years and I just didn't want to do it. Not because I couldn't cope, possibly, I don't know. But, but you know, I could have done that. I could have done anything else I wanted to do. What I actually wanted to be was a nurse. I wanted to deliver care. I wanted to be at the heart of planning care and treatment. I wanted to be there when you can evaluate it. And I wanted to see the outcomes and the outputs of what I delivered. And I have loved being part of the NHS family. And that's the thing I would share with you. Once you come into the NHS, it will stay with you. You are part of this family. So, uh, Angie, I'll hand over to you. And I hope that didn't take too long. That's, uh, like I said, I've heard some of your story before. And I'm always absolutely inspired by you, uh, Sue, such a, such an advocate for the profession, and the 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 term that I love that you used earlier was it's opened the world for you. That nursing has opened the doors of the world for you, and I think you know what other careers um, could open those doors in the same way. And um, so the nursing career is just absolutely amazing. I'm not a nurse. I wish I was <laughs> at times. Um, but um, yeah, thank you for that, Sue. And um, it's really lovely to hear your story. We will come back with a, a few more questions, I'm sure. But if I could move over to Tara. And, and Tara, I wonder if you could um, give your story a little bit and what nursing means to you as well, please. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, so I'm Tara Rees. I'm actually a liver um, clinical nurse specialist in Carton Vale. Um, and pretty similar to Sue and Alex, I, I trained sort of 30 years ago, actually. Um, so again, a lot of experience. I started my career um, in a critical care environment, but not critical care as we know it now, with all sort of the machines and and the technology, but very much sort of having to use our intuition, um, knowledge base. Um, I was fortunate to work with some nurses that have been around a long time, so they had a wealth of knowledge. They were very keen to share and impart their knowledge um, with me, so I loved that. Um, and I had opportunities at an early start to sort of take on more courses. And again, I'll just echo what everybody else has said as far as is lifelong learning. I, I love learning and I love a challenge. So I sort of embraced the opportunities and and pretty much like Sue that, you know, it is a passport really. So I went over to Australia. I did some traveling there, but also did some nursing, um, got experience in both sort of 
private and public sort of um, healthcare service over there, which was quite interesting. Um, and then I came back to Wales. Then I thought, well, I'm going to see what's going on in London. I think London's ready for me, so I'll go and see. And spent some time in um, the intensive care unit there and sort of had access to seeing surgeries like a liver transplant because we don't actually do that in Wales. And I think all of that was sort of the building blocks of where I was meant to be. Um, and I've been a clinical nurse speci specialist in liver disease, actually, for the last 20 years or coming up 21. And within that time, the opportunities that I've had and the career I've had has just been amazing and still is. And I can see will go on. You know, I'm still very much invigorated. I'm very much challenged. Um, things are ever evolving that you feel I want to I want to beat that. I want to improve that or or have a better service for our patients. So it's always that drive there to continue. I've been very fortunate that I've worked with a fantastic and still do a fantastic team that have got the same vision and, and passion and drive, which I think is really important um, to sort of look at different ways of working, be innovative and, and see what you can achieve. So um, I'm extremely proud to be a nurse. I'm extremely proud of the NHS and feel very passionately about the NHS. And um, I'm still excited for the next number of years to see what else we can do. But um, last year, as part of some of the work I've done, um, I, I won the RCN Nurse of the Year, which was just such is such an honour. Um, very overwhelming. Um, you know, um, you do think, oh my, I can't believe this has happened to me because I'm in such a small area, but that just proves you just carry on, you do your job and and people do recognise the work that you do. And um, what's lovely is that because liver disease, I feel, is is sometimes under the umbrella of maybe gastroenterology, this has given me an opportunity to put it out there and highlight some of the work and the needs of the patients. So um, I think nursing is a great career. And like you, Sue, I think if they asked me from, you know, if you had your life over again, 100% I would. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Tara. That really lovely to hear and I just went to um you know congratulations on the on the award on the award I mean you know nurse of the year is so so special oh um, it is what does that mean and um, what do you have to do for this year uh, sort of on top of your day job I suppose you know can you just yeah. give us a bit of a flavor of what you've been doing I think you know I, I've obviously been asked to speak at sort of corporate level I've been live on BBC Radio 2 um, sort of promoting the NHS um, and again it's just given opportunities I've done an article for the Western Mail um, and it's sort of I've applied now for the Florence Nightingale um, scholarship um, course and things so I'm awaiting an outcome for that I'm not sure if I'm on it but I wouldn't have maybe known or considered these things before. So it it very much puts you on a platform and um, be able to sort of, you know, showcase the work that you do. But I think more importantly is showing the needs of the service, you know, and the needs of your patients. Um, and I I feel like with this award, if I can highlight liver disease, OK, is the first thing. And secondly, inspire nurses to come into this field of nursing, then I feel I've done the award justice. Um, so, yeah. That's Absolutely. Good. That's yeah. really lovely to hear. And, you know, I think, you know, both of your stories, very different, very inspiring. And I think, you know, the theme coming from both of you is that day you stepped into that very first day when you started to train to be a nurse, and then the sort of three years or so when you got your nice shiny certificate, that wasn't the end. It was actually, in a sense, only the beginning um, of, of this lifelong career with plenty of opportunity, plenty of variety. Yeah. Um, and I think that's what I'm, I'm hearing from both of you. So thank you very much for, for sharing some of your story. Again, like I say, we will come back to you. But I just want to turn to our, our um, student nurses with us today. Um, Oliver, if I could start with you, please. Um, 
just you know you're, you're in your first year at university and um, just give us a bit of a flavor of when you started but also what made you consider um a, a career in nursing to to get you into that university place Oliver, uh, please. i wanted to become a nurse because i've always wanted to help people and to show my compassion to make me a better nurse i thought adult uh nursing could help uh, could offer me a chance to make a difference in my community and uh, to make a high degree of flexibility and a career with uh, employment prospects. Uh, I was prompted by my nurse by my family and it, uh, because I had to look after my grandparents when they were ill but and they said that I was always caring and uh, compassionate. Sorry, I turned my mic off and I didn't get to it quickly enough. Thank, thank you, Oliver. So um, in terms of um, studying to be a nurse, was there any particular reason why you wanted to study in Wales? Or uh, I, I chose to work in Wales because I've lived in Wales for my, most of my life and I just want to give back to my community and to stay close with my family too. Fantastic. Yeah, we, we want everybody to stay nursing in Wales. We want people to train in Wales, stay in Wales, get, get the opportunities in Wales. So uh, that that's really nice. Thank you. I can't actually see Jay. Are you here on, on my screen? Yeah, I'm Jamie, here. sorry. Hello. Hello. So same question for you, please, Jamie. You know, why why nursing and why nursing in there in Wales? Oh, you've well, moved on my screen. <laughs> I live in Wales um, and obviously the opportunity because I'm so close to university I thought why not um, let's give it a go uh, I've worked in care for over 20 odd years as a healthcare support worker so I thought it's time for a transition little change for me now it's to really up my game a bit um, as well is thinking about I'm um, field specific as well I'm doing mental health nursing so I am really focused. My interest and my passion is on mental health, how the mind works, how the person thinks. Why does the person think like that? And that's what I love about learning so much. That's fantastic. Um, and it's it's great because you you this is your second career. Maybe you know you've you've changed direction. You've gone into nursing at you know we we tend to think about students being quite young. Actually, that's not the case, is it? And I and I think um, you know. I, our, our colleagues from universities will actually say to you it's not just about uh, the 18 year olds but actually all the way way through the age range and so and it's fantastic that you've had a career in healthcare support worker and now you're moving into into the nursing as well so really great I'm gonna just ask you one more question um because picking up on what you just said I think Angie's frozen. Yes, I think so. Yeah, let me just see if I can contact her. Uh, perhaps we could come to the moderator for the yeah, question and answer sessions. Some, yeah, I've got some questions while Angie uh, comes back online. So thanks, everyone. There's some lovely comments from um, some of our attendees today saying how inspiring the career of nursing sounds. So really good to hear um, a question for you Tara that's coming from um, one of the attendees and it's what aspects of the job do you enjoy the most if you don't mind oh there is so many things I love about the job I uh, you know I do love the patient care I think you know working with patients with liver disease um, I feel like they're a very underrepresented group of patients. Um, so I love being an advocate and fighting for them. I, I love that. Um, I Like I said, I do enjoy work um, learning. So I've had the opportunity to study and do my master's and do my prescribing. And, and I love sort of being quite autonomous. I, I do enjoy that, but also being part of a team. So there's many things that I do enjoy. Um, and I like the fact is ever evolving and I've been allowed to sort of steer the service as I 
feel fit to some degree because I came in with a blank canvas. Um, this role was not really done anywhere else in Wales, so I had to make of it where I could. So all those things make me really still very much enjoy my job. Perfect. Sounds amazing. Angie, welcome back. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> not sure what happened questions, there. But, but um, no. I'll hand back over to you. Thanks, Antonia. And thanks for picking up. Um, nice and seamless there, wasn't it? Um, Jamie, if I can come back to you. Sorry, I was going to ask um, because you you had been in a in one career and you've decided to come into this career a little bit later. So I suppose um, the question I wanted to, you, to ask you is. Um, what's the sort of advice you would give to somebody who's perhaps in a different job um, and are thinking about going into nursing? So a bit bit like obviously the the thinking you must have gone through. And, and, and I know I've I'm given you a little bit of time to think about it. <laughs> and I know that um, I've changed careers. Um, you know, I, I started off as a professional musician, believe it or not. Um, and then I went into education and then I went into a professional sort of HR workforce things. So I've had three careers in life. But what's really interesting is my very first career about in music has come back to haunt me, I think I might say, in, in my current role, because we're doing a choir. <laughs> so uh, nothing is ever wasted. So, Jamie, I've given you a little bit of time to think. <laughs> Thank you, Angie. Um, there's a lot of questions that I did ask. Can I afford to? What are the pros and the cons? Um, it was a lot of deliberation, but then it was just that step I had to take. And for anyone that wanted to go into nursing, it is one of the best decisions that I have ever made. Because, yes, I have experience within the care field, but it's now, that, like I said, that learning. The finances are not a problem because, obviously, if you live in Wales, the NHS will help with the finances and the bursary. There, there's so many options, like you said before and earlier on, to coming to nursing. And I just took the leap. Excellent. And you, by the smile on your face, you're not looking back in any way. <laughs> no, I haven't yet. That's great. Thank you. Um, later on in this session, we will have a, um, some questions around the, the bursary and the financial um, package that, that would be a, a, on offer for you as well, just to, to let you know about that. OK, so thank you. Um, I'm going to come back to Sue, um, if I may, please. Um, and I just wanted you to think to to actually try and explain to us where you're the chief nursing officer in Wales you have a vision for nursing going forward you know what is your sort of vision for the nursing of the future what is nursing going to look like um how would you describe what a nurse is um maybe and then how you see the profession developing over the next sort of 5 10 15 years please yeah thank you thank you Angie um so currently, I think, let me just explain. My role as the chief nursing officer in Wales is the most senior nurse in Wales, who's the head of the profession for nursing and midwifery. And I set the strategic vision for the profession or either over an annual basis or over three or four years. And I do that in conjunction with the nurses in the system. I, do, I don't do it alone. My role is to advise. I'm the professional advisor to the Minister for Health and Social Services on all things related to nursing matters. So that's from education, their regulation, um, uh, and and um, everything related to the profession, workforce particularly. And you'll know workforce is one of our biggest challenges at the moment within the, the nursing and midwifery profession. It's a global challenge. It's a global shortage of, of nurses. This is not just for us, hence why we're talking to you about who we are and what we do. Um, so we have, in having to set those priorities, I spend time a lot of time speaking to the frontline nurses, people like Tara and others. I will ask people like Oliver and Jay, I will ask exactly what it is that you want for the profession. What are you looking forward to? What do you need? So I spend a lot of my time in listening mode, trying to understand what is required. And then I translate that into strategy at a really high level that I can, um, that's supported by our ministers, of course, and then down for delivery to our uh, executive directors of nursing at health board level. So the priorities are set dependent on our current challenges or dependent on where we want to move forward for the future. Currently, it's on workforce so recruitment, 
So getting the right people into the right place to do the right job with the right skills is really, really important um, because this, as I said earlier, it's not an easy job to do. It's a terribly rewarding job, but it's not easy. And you've got to come into this job with your eyes fully opened. You've got to know what you're coming into and then and then only can you truly commit to this job, I think. Retention is really important, so ensuring we have the working conditions right for those of you that work in this in this environment. It's it's brilliant and it's amazing. But like I said, you know, caring for others takes a little bit from you as well. So we've got to look after you. Your well-being is really, really important as you journey through your career. So my focus is on retention and the well-being of the profession, clearly making the profession attractive. So why would someone like you want to come and be a nurse? Simply because Tara, myself, Oliver and, and, and Jay tell you that it's a great profession. You don't have to believe us, but you know, I want you to see the research. I want you to look at the evidence. I want you to hear from other people in the profession that this is an attractive profession, that we will pay for you to study. We will pay for you to learn. We will support your career development, whether you want to be a chief executive in the NHS. We have a few nurses in the as chief executives in our system, or you want to work at the front line, you want to be an advanced nurse pract uh, practitioner like Tara, or you want to be a, uh, in one of the, the top leadership positions like the chief nursing officers in the United Kingdom. That's that's up to you. You decide and we will support you in your journey. So that's what's making making the profession attractive is really important for me. Ensuring we have a gender balance in nursing. It's it's quite female heavy, as you know, it's it's a it's a, a female dominant profession, but ensuring we have more Olivers and Jamies within the profession, because I'm really clear that the balance of diversity, whether they come in gender or race or colour or uh, anything, anything else, it is really important to have those with protected characteristics working within our profession because we deliver for our population who have different protected characteristics and only then will we start to give care that is of the best quality. In terms of the future, Look, I'm really focused on us understanding who is the nurse for the future? How do you work in the safety critical profession? Because it is, it's a safety critical profession. It requires us to be degree educated, really smart people working in this profession, much smarter than me, by the way, like really, really smart people around me. How do you continue to enable this by utilizing digital technology for the future, by ensuring we can build AI, into the role of the nurse, because that is really important. AI will, will come into its own and complement the role of the nurse, but we've got to be ready to do that. We've got to be able to think for the future in um, being autonomous practitioners. How do we continue to build that career pathway and build on the skills and the talent and the knowledge, not replacing any other role in healthcare because we're not doctors, we are nurses. That's who we are. We have a unique contribution to the healthcare sector. We hold the healthcare sector up. So, so if I think ahead, I think of who are the nurses for the future? What's your educational requirement going to be like? What do you need to be at the top of your license to work? How do we how do we think about then rewarding and recognizing you appropriately? So my future vision for the for the, for, for nurses is about prevention as well, not simply in a hospital, because I think we think nurse and that's what you see on the television. You see us always in within four walls in a hospital, but but nursing happens everywhere. It happens in the community all the time and prevention, the prevention agenda from everything of smoking and alcohol, obesity, cardiac disease, that heart disease. How do we start to really work in the prevention space? And for me, the new community nurse, is the future for for nursing. So that community nurse was highly technically skilled, really utilizing technology and virtual ward environments and utilizing all of that at their disposal that they have at their disposal to be at the very top and work at the very top of their license. So I think uh, I think I'll stop there because I can probably speak for Wales, as you know by now, Angie. But I think that's kind of my vision for nursing. That's fantastic. Thank you, Sue. Uh, and um, Tara, again, you know, a, a similar question um, for you. You know, why would you recommend um, 
being a nurse in Wales? So a similar, slightly different angle. Yeah, I mean, for me in Wales, I think um, we're far more friendly, for one. But um, <laughs> I think the, the opportunities, certainly where I work, um, it can be quite a small world. So um, as far as working together as one nation, actually, and looking for policy changes, um, quality improvement, all these services driving forward for better patient care, I think is achieve is more achievable in Wales, you know. Um, sort of when I've gone to conferences maybe over in England and they they obviously the the payments and things like that is, is works very differently. I feel as Wales, I do feel united we stand, and I'm quite proud of that as well. Um and, you know, safety in numbers, I think, you know, we would have the loudest voice if we all stood together to make change. So I think that's a real quality in Wales um, that I don't think you actually get anywhere else. Not that I've experienced. Thank you. That's okay. that's a really that's a really big plus for staying in Wales. So thank you for that. I'm going to come to Oliver and Jay, and I just want you whether you could just give us a little bit of insight. You know, how has your first your first year so far been? So Oliver, if I can start with you. Yeah, it's been a really great year for starting off, and it's been really educational and learning about the basics of nursing and the NMC and how it works and how it keeps the public safe. And it, yeah, it's been such an insightful course to join. Brilliant. And, and where are you studying at the moment? Uh, Aberystwyth University. So you're sitting in in uh, very rainy West Wales, I'm sitting in Pembroke, which is not that far away, but uh, yeah, uh, it's uh, so it's great. So it doesn't matter where in Wales you live, there is a university quite close to you. So if you don't want to leave home or go too far from home, uh, there there is one fairly close to you. And if you do want to go go away from home, you can still stay within in Wales as well. So it's really, really um, uh, the opportunities are absolutely out there for you. So, Jay, if I can come to you, please, how, how is your first year going? And if you give us a bit of a flavour of what you've been doing. I think we may have lost Jay, have we? Apparently, the camera for Jay has uh, been blocked. No. Okay, let me just check the settings. Give me a minute. Not just to let this mic be. Sorry, say again, Jay. I'm just trying oh, to turn down. Yeah, so, yeah, we can now. Thanks, Jay. Hello, Can you repeat the question again, please? I've just promoted you to presenter Jay. You just hadn't clicked in for some reason. There you go. Hello. Apologies, Jay. Did you hear the question? Uh, kind of. Could you repeat it again, please? Yeah. How is, you know, let us know how is your um, first year going? What's the sort of things you've been doing and, and how is the year going for you in your first first year? Well, first year so far, the uh, hopefully six months now, isn't it? It's uh, gone very, very quickly. Um, you, do, you don't realise how fast it actually goes until you start doing it. Is we've been learning about the anatomy the physiology of the body having lectures from different types of people from different walks of life which has been absolutely amazing it's been a such an opening experience with that as well because we've had amputees come in and speak about their experiences from when they got injured or lost their arm or leg uh we've had people come in to speak to us about pet therapy so it's been absolutely amazing um we've been on clinical placement as well so I was down in your neck of the woods there, Angie. I was uh, studying in London, Drug Wales. Um, I'm originally from, obviously, England, but I live near Aberystwyth, so this was my choice of university to come to. Excellent. Oh, thank you for that. That is really good news. So you can see from Jamie Jay's face how thrilled he is in, in his face like lit up when he was describing what being a, a nurse in training is all about and um, I'm just going to hand over to Antonia for a moment I just wondered if there's one or two questions that were in the sidebar that um, you might want to um, 
to, yeah. to throw in, please? Sure, there's quite a lot of questions coming in about flexibility of study, which we'll obviously pick up in our next session a bit later on. Um, but someone's asking about, um, they've been out of education for a while, and is there any advice for anyone who's been out of education and wants to get back into it? They don't feel they're academic enough. So is there any advice um, to that uh, attendee, please? Would like to pick that one up first. So, would you like to? Uh, yeah, I was. Oh. I was going to ask one of the students to think about, and then I will come in after that, if that's okay. Okay, thank you. So, Jamie, as a student, that probably had had to think about that one. Um, not really. No, it's it's been a bit difficult because obviously starting to think right how am I going to do this but then I started speaking to the university and said right what do I need to come into nursing that was my first port of call and then I started realizing right I've got my math I've got my English I've got my science uh what else do I need oh I've got a diploma in higher education <laughs> so it's just asking that person or the organization where you want to go what their requirements are to enter that university um there are other options to go down as well if you say you're worried about your maths or something and you could do like uh adult education to get your maths up then go into it there are severely many many options to coming into nursing excellent thanks thanks jay so i think that you know the key message is that there are um a lot of opportunities and i can see martin who who leads our our education team um, let's just put his hand up. So I know we're going to cover some of this in the next session, but I'm going to hand over to Martin for a moment. Well, thank you. It was a really good. It was a really good question, and um, I think that sometimes doing a three-year course or a four-year course part-time can be a little bit daunting because it's a huge commitment. And what I'm going to talk about a little bit later are opportunities where you can work and you can learn, and actually you can do bite-sized modules to reintroduce you to education, um, which will upskill you, it'll give you confidence and actually help you make that next jump. So please don't think you've got to go straight in and do th three years full time, which could be daunting. You can do that, but actually there's bite-sized education that we're developing, which will actually see if you've got the aptitude and the desire to go on and do more. So there's lots of steps to this and lots of different ways in. Yeah, I think that's really, really important that it's not one size fits all. And so we're doing a lot of work to make different offerings to suit different people, different needs uh, and, and different wants as well. It's not just all about people needing something different. Sometimes you just don't want to study in the traditional way. And we've got loads of opportunities which we'll we'll share uh, in the next session. So I'm uh, Antonia, is there another question? Oh, sorry, Sue, did I did you want to come in there? Sorry. OK, no, Antonio. it's quite all right. Thank you. I think <laughs> Martin and Jamie answered it all. Thank you. And Antonio, is there another question? Yeah, sure. There's, there's quite a few coming in, so just moderating them. Um, so this one's for Sue. Uh, what aspects about midwifery did you enjoy the most? And what's oh. the hardest part of uh, midwifery? <laughs> Oh, so uh, so I trained in South Africa as a midwife and um, I had the very best experience. I think there's a video of me somewhere with HEIW telling you about my experience in maternity. And, you know, I didn't just work within a hospital setting delivering babies. I worked uh, many years ago, 30 odd years ago in rural settings. So I think I told Angie, you know, I'd get on a bus in the morning at like 6 a.m. The bus would drive you out to the most rural rural setting and they'd say walk three miles in that direction and you'll come you'll get to the kind of chief's village and you'd go good god okay so you take your bags and all your stuff and you'd head out to the to the village and then you'd land in kind of the rural setting and um, and you'd see all the pregnant mums you'd you know who couldn't come to ex access care you take care to them um, and, and you deliver babies that were maybe unexpected on the day or maybe you were expecting to deliver babies and you'd wait all day and then at like seven o'clock the bus would pick you back up on this dusty road and you just hope that they'd turn up or else you were on your own literally you had to get home right which was really quite uh interesting but i loved i loved maternity uh and midwifery i had to deliver 100 babies um so i did 
and the what the difficult bit was giving them back to their mums <laughs> i didn't want to do that i really wanted to keep them all uh, and i and i obviously my my husband would have had something to say about that so i we didn't we didn't keep them all but i loved the i loved being with the women uh, and i loved just um watching their journeys and advising them on best health care and then being there at a birth and this really you know it's a little more complicated now in midwifery because women are a little older and uh, you know they're, they're much more comorbidities which are which are other diseases that affect affect your kind of uh, well-being that you have to consider but I think when I did midwifery the fact that we did most of it was midwife-led care those years ago we had mainly midwife-led care um, and the fact that you're in charge of that environment you're you're running the 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 the, the, the labor if you like the mum is in charge you're waiting with her she tells you to move you move she tells you I don't feel well you you follow through and the most amazing thing that I loved about being a midwife was the cultural differences so uh, South Africa, I don't know if you guys know, we speak 11 official languages. Um, so 11 official languages gives you about 15 different ethnic groups and everyone has a cultural difference around maternity and its expectations. And that for me was the best learning ever to park everything that I believed in and go with what the women wanted for themselves. And then keeping those moms and babies safe was just the best thing. I did kiss lots of babies' feet. I don't think you're supposed to do that as a midwife, but I did, I love them. Yeah, thanks, Angie. <laughs> oh, that's, that's a lovely story. Um, I, I think that, you know, again, you can see the passion coming through. So, and I'm also quite conscious of time because we we are gonna go to a break at, at five two. Um, but I, know there is a lot of chat coming through the um the chat bar so we will point you in in the direction of the website we will try and answer all of the questions obviously it may not be today we're trying our best to keep up so there's a team behind all of this trying to answer as many questions as we possibly can um but we will um also be making this um recording available on careers one as well if you want to have an, another listen so I think in the last few minutes, what I would like to ask, um, and maybe if I can start with our, our two students, with Oliver and, and with Jay, and if I can ask you, what are you, from your perspective, what are the three top tips that you would give anybody who was thinking of going into an into a nurse uh, into a nursing uh, program? And obviously, Tara and Sue, I'm going to give you the same sort of question, but you know. In three words, what would you say, why would I want to become a nurse? So if I can come to Oliver, please, first. Um, so three top tips on, on um, thinking about going into nursing. Just make sure that you're fully in it and that you're wanting to do nursing and that you enjoy yourself. And it, it, it's a hard profession to get into but whilst you're in it it is amazing and well, yeah just just enjoy yourself make sure that you get research and stuff then and make sure you do all your assignments properly and all that but you'll get through easily if you try hard enough fantastic thank you so make sure you're fully in for it Enjoy yourself and take every opportunity and, and the research and the doors that open to you. Thank you very, very much for that. And Jay. I, yeah, I'd just like to reiterate, reiterate what Ollie said, really, is um, when you think about going into nursing, do your research, what university you want to go to, where you want to go, what you want to get out of the nursing programme as well. That's the most important thing is for me, it was mental health. I was very specific. I always wanted to do mental health. Um, for some people may be midwifery, they might want to go into general nursing. Um, complete research of the field that you want to go into as long well, because that's important because you may think, is that for me? Is that not for me? Um, also, research about the, which you guys are going to talk about a bit later on anyway, is the finances and the benefits. You've got to do a list of pros and cons. Obviously, if you live in Wales, the NHS will pay for your training, which is brilliant. Um, 
because that's the way I've gone through it because I couldn't afford to do it solo. Um, but yeah, it's mainly research, isn't it? It's just reminding yourself to think, right, I want to do this. How do I get there? I think that is a, a really key point because, uh, you know, while we would love everyone on this call to want to be a nurse and and, and pursue a, a career in nursing, actually it is just as important to be clear that perhaps it is not for you as much as it is for you. And I think that is a really, really important thing um, that you've pulled out there, Jay. Do your research, make sure it's for you. Um, Oliver talked about being, you know, make sure you're fully up for it. Um, that is so, so important. And hopefully events like this will help you to uh, think that through for yourselves. So, um, so um, in case I'm going to say in case I forget now, but um, for you two guys and your students, wish you every success in your career. I'm sure you'll be fantastic nurses. Um, and it's been an absolute honour to have you as part of this today. Um, so thank you very much. Please don't go at the moment because I'm just going to give the last uh, last but one word to Tara, please. Um, three words that sums it up for you, please. Keep moving forward. I think you're going to have challenges along the way, no matter what area you go in or what you do. Um, and there may be times when you will hear no. But I think when you've got the motivation, the compassion, um, you keep moving forward and you'll get to where you're supposed to be. And I truly believe that. Whatever it is, I wish you all the best. Thank you. That's really great advice. Thank you, Tara. Okay. And then the very last word in this session to you, please, Sue. So what three words I would say to you, yes, ju just do it. If you're thinking about it, just do it. You will not regret this decision that you make. I'd say it's a career that enables you to absorb, learn and be professionally curious for your entire career. I would tell you which other profession is gets to be there at the birth of a baby and at the end of someone's life. You are there. It's a privilege. It's an honour. It is absolutely incredible to be the only profession that gets to be there through the life course for people. And I'd say you are the most respected profession when you are a nurse. We come up time and time and time again on the UK Ipsos Mori uh, survey that's done. We are one of the most respected and trusted professionals. Um, and I'd say as a CNO, I'm really committed to my nurses in the system. I'm committed to listening. I'm committed to making it better for you. So if you're thinking about it, just do it. Fantastic advice. So thank you very, very much. Um, I've certainly enjoyed this session. It's been really insightful. I hope that uh, everyone on the call has found it incredibly useful and just hearing the passion about being a nurse and what nursing is to the, the four members of our panel today has just been so great to hear. Um, so for me, an absolutely huge thank you to Sue, to Tara, to Oliver and to Jay for joining us um, today. Um, we couldn't have done this without you and you've been absolutely amazing. So thank you very, very much. And uh, you're very welcome to stay for the rest of the, the session if you wish, of course. Um, but we hope to see you in the very new near future. So thank you very much. So we're going to go for a, a break um, now, just for uh, five minutes. The, less, the next session starts at five o'clock when we'll be looking at um, some myth busting and uh, applying for a nursing programme. So uh, please don't go anywhere. Please join us at five o'clock. Thank you very much.
Sarah. Hi. Am Hi. I still, am I still needed, Angie? Uh, Sarah, Angie? Am I still needed now or no? I'll defer to Sarah. I don't think so. Thank you, Tara. You were Thank amazing. You were able, oh, you're able, you're able, you're able awesome. to stay on and join us for further conversations, um, but that's fine otherwise. So we'll just move on to the next section now because we're live. So over to you, Angie. Oh, I didn't realise we were live. Oh, I thought sorry. we were in the other room. <laughs> and me. I'll, I, I will leave you to it. I'm happy to stay yeah. if you want me to. I just... I wasn't sure. Yeah. Please, please have a lovely evening. Thank you. All the best. <laughs> Good luck, everyone. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> OK, so welcome back, everybody. Those of you who uh, just heard me sort of think I was in a different room, a private room. So uh, thankfully, I didn't say anything in inappropriate. Um, not that I would, but uh, it's always good to know that you don't. OK, so the next session, we're going to do a little bit of myth busting um, and, and sort of how how much you know about uh, studying in in uh, to become a um, I got my uh, my words all muddled up there. How new, much you know about studying to be a nurse in Wales? So I'm going to hand over to Sarah, who's going to lo lead us through the next session for the next sort of 20, 25 minutes or so. So thank, thank you, Sarah. You, thank you. So Shamai Pao, hello, my name is Sarah Abraham and I'm the head of future workforce here in Health Education Improvement Wales. So within my role, myself and my team provide information and guidance on the wealth of careers that are available within the NHS in Wales. So as Angie said, this section is going to be touching on some of the questions that you've been answering and asking in the question and answer box. Um, so hopefully we can answer some of those questions for you. Um, and obviously my colleague who will be following up this presentation, Martin Riley, may able, be able to answer some of those questions also. So I'm looking for some audience participation if that's okay. So at the top of your screen there you can see on the black bar a react um, wording with a smiley face. So I'd like you to interact with us and press um, your reaction buttons if you think the statements are true or false. So for something that you believe is to be true I'd be grateful if you could provide the thumbs up and press that on the react button. For those questions and statements that you believe to be false, please put the shocked face reaction button. So on to the next slide. The first question that we have here is how much do you know about being a nurse in Wales? So the first question is, you do need a lot of life and work experience before applying to be a student on a nursing programme. So, audience participation, please. Is that true or is that false? So, lots of you already have done some, obviously, some research. Lots of those answering that it is false. So, on the next slide, we could provide the answer. And the answer on the next slide is indeed false. So, as many of you know, and just reflecting on the conversations that we've had from Jay, the student nurse who spoke earlier, um, and obviously the experiences of Tara and Sue, um, lots of the universities that run um, nursing programmes specify their own entry criteria. So it's worth doing this research and finding out what exactly you need to get on their course. And as Jamie said earlier, please feel free to speak to these universities and find out in detail. However, as a rounder, um, in terms of the experience and qualifications, there's a combination really that are required by the universities. So that's a combination of qualifications. So what qualifications do you have? Do you have a diploma? Do you have a level three qualification or do you have GCSEs or equivalent? Life and work experience. Many of us don't spend the time to sit back and reflect, actually, what have I done? What have I learned? What do I know? What are my skills? So as Oliver said earlier in his experience, he decided to become a nurse because of the caring responsibilities that he had for grandparents. And he knew that he was a caring person and showed compassion. So it's really good for us to think back and think, OK, what life experience have I have? Have I cared for a member of my family or close relative? And what did I do? Did I administer their medication? Did I help them access different types of health services? Or did I undertake any work experience? Work tasters? 
or what work experience did I gain from elsewhere? Did I work as a team member? Did I work as an individual? Lots of people as well on um, training courses have access to volunteering. Um, and it's volunteering is a good way to get some work experience type skills and absolutely put those on your application form. Other opportunities also involve Duke of Edinburgh schemes. Have any of you undertaken any of those challenges? And also the Royal College of Nursing Cadet Scheme. I could see that one of our audience members um, is open to undertaking that scheme. And during that scheme, you learn a lot in a workshop environment and undertake lots of observational skills within a hospital setting. So it's really important to think, how have my experiences inside work, outside work, or even if I haven't worked, my life and family experiences helped me. Martin, later on in his presentation, will cover off what the various entry routes are um, onto a nursing programme. But it's just thinking about what makes you, you. What experience and personal skills have I got that sets me out to be different from everybody else? How can I really sell those in my application form? So looking at, as we can see there, the core principles for the NHS, it's good to reflect on those and think, how can I demonstrate those in my application form or indeed my interview to further my career within the health setting? So do you put patients first? Have you put uh, somebody else first in your family? Have you improved and provided care for somebody? Is in well-being important to you and is prevention important to you, as Sue Tranka mentioned earlier on? Do I take time to reflect and learn? So that's a part of completing your application form, isn't it? What do I know? What have I done? How can I learn from this experience? Do you like team working? Have you worked in a team in your volunteering or as your Duke of Edinburgh? And of obviously, you know, valuing each other's values and behaviours and treating everybody as an individual. So it's really good to reflect on those and just take away the understanding that it's a combination of those that universities will be looking for, but absolutely have the conversation directly with them. And on to the next slide. So again, your participation would be very, very much appreciated. So we did touch on this earlier. Um, so is this true or false? Thumbs up for true, shocked face for false. I won't be able to afford to be a student. As we heard from Jamie earlier, this was certainly one of his considerations and certainly one of the considerations that we've seen in the question section on this webinar. So a bit of a mixed reaction there from people. So let's go on to the next slide where we'll find that the answer is actually false. So as we heard from Jamie, there is an NHS Wales bursary award scheme, which is available to all students that have secured their places on a health related degree at a Welsh university. To be eligible, you must permanently reside in Wales, not just the purposes of your study, but actually reside in Wales on a permanent basis. This is a Welsh government policy and the bursary includes a financial support for you as a student. So it fully covers the cost of your tuition fees at university, regardless if you're studying full time or part time. It also helps with the cost of living. So if you apply for the bursary award, you will have a thousand pounds non means tested maintenance grant every academic year. And this you can keep. We won't ask for it back. You're able to apply for a means tested bursary. So we will look at your household income and see then what you can be provided. And additional support can also be accessed for childcare and dependence allowance amongst others. It's really important to say that in terms of the bursary, it's non-refundable, so we won't ask for that money back. However, we do ask that you are committed to working within Wales, within the NHS in Wales, as a nurse for two years after qualifying for your degree. Now, we won't guarantee any jobs. As you know, you complete your degree studies and then you find a job. However, what we can say is that we always have opportunities to employ nurses in Wales. Additionally, students in Wales can also apply for the Students Maintenance Loan, loan which is available from Student Wales Finance. In addition to this, if you are interested in studying part of your course in Welsh, 
you can apply for a scholarship from Collega Cymraeg and they will provide again um, amount of money that you have on your scholarship. Again, they won't ask for that money back. It's yours to keep. So on to the next question. So the next question, the salary for a nurse, what do people think? Let's have your reactions, please. Let's have the thumbs up for true or the shocked face for false. Is the salary for a nurse £28,834 a year? So again, mixed reaction there and potentially this is a trick question. So if we go on to the next slide, we can see that this is in fact true. Yes, nurses do earn this, but it's important to note that this is the starting basic salary of a nurse at a band five. This is most nurses starting their career with NHS Wales. However, this is a basic salary. So as a nurse, you may be working shifts, you may be working weekends. So you may be entitled to additional payments for what we call working and social hours or working shift allowance. As we can see there, there's a band for each type of nurse within the NHS. So a band five, the bottom of that is 28,834, which progresses to the top of the band, which where the salary is 35,099 pounds. So you can see there the band salary for a band six nurse and a band seven. As we've heard from our students earlier, and Sue Tranka and also Tara Reese, there are other benefits to working as a nurse. Some of these is difficult to capture, but in essence, as we've heard, lots of it is to do with continuous learning and development, meaning that you can progress your career within the current band you're in, or actually progress your career up the nursing bands. 37 and a half hours is a standard working week for a nurse and there are many options to be flexible with regards to shift working and part-time working within your hospitals and the settings in which nurses are employed. There is a good pension scheme, um, not that perhaps the youngsters nowadays would concentrate on a young on a pension scheme, but the holidays are also good. We have 28 days annual leave and public holidays are in addition to that. Um, the number of annual leave days also increases with the number of years that you work within the service. Obviously as well, we have blue light cards, which you have to apply for um, and subsidise. It's a five pound charge for a blue light card for a year where you're entitled to have NHS staff discounts at many shops and services and restaurants. And there's also opportunity to claim uh, childcare vouchers as well. So there's lots and lots of opportunities. OK, so the next slide. There is only one field of nursing. So again, let me have your thoughts. Is this true? A thumbs up or is this false? Lots of people are reacting, lots of people showing that they've done their homework and done their research. So let's go on to the next slide and find out the answer. It is, is indeed false. So I'm glad to say that everyone here had the right answer. So as we will hear later, there are four main nursing programmes, and these are within mental health, learning disabilities, adults and children's nursing. However, our colleague Martin will tell us later about the student placements and what they will look like during your studying period. So even though you will train on one of the four main programmes, there are opportunities for your placements to be in a variety of settings with a variety of focus. After you've qualified, there are over 70 different specialty areas which, as a qualified nurse, you could go into. So you could be in district nurse, which delivers holistic care to patients in their own homes. You'll be treating them with respect, privacy and dignity. You could be a general practice nurse, so responsible for care delivered in a GP practice, taking bloods or holding specialist clinics. And in this role, you would demonstrate critical thinking, decision making and management of patients. You could be a theatre nurse, so working in the operating theatre with surgeons. You will be assessing the situation, planning and implementing uh, individual, individualised care. So with over 70 opportunities and specialist areas open to you, why not train to be a nurse? This is demonstrated on our next slide 
which although provides the detail for what mental health nursing will look like, there's a variety of roles there that are replicated across all the nursing professions. So on the next slide, we can see a variety of examples of what a band five nurse looks like, what a band six nurse like, looks like, and then progress in your career. So within mental health nursing, you could be in a setting such as in a community, based in the community, based in a hospital, or based in a forensic or secure unit, or even based in a prison. So as we can see, you would start off your career as a band five nurse within one of these fields, perhaps in mental health nursing, and then progress to a band six, seven, and further on up the banding and salary position. Just for you to know, that potentially a nurse, and as we heard from Sue Tranker, she is the Chief Nursing Officer for Wales. So potentially working your way up through these band scales up to a band um, C and D nurse, you could be earning nearly £95,000 a year. So I hope that's inspirational for you. Lots of the information that we've covered off today will be followed up in email to yourself signposting you to resources and web links that we put in the Q&A um, facility and we'll try and endeavour to answer all your questions in those email and signposting responses after the event. The event will be recorded and again we'll notify you of where this sits on our Careersville platform but please don't hesitate to ask us any questions at all at the NHS Wales Careers mailbox address as you can see featured in the question and answer box. Thank you for your time and I'll hand you back to Angie and the next part of the presentation. Thanks everyone, thanks Sarah. Um, really insightful to get some of those myth busters and, and a bit of an idea of um, the potential and the, the wide variety of options once you uh, qualify as a registered nurse. And then the, as Sue said in her, her um, session, that the world is open for you. So lots and lots of different routes and it's an ongoing continual career pathway if that's the route you want to take. But also if you want to stay on the front line for the rest of your career, that is there's some opportunities within that as well. So it's really good to hear it. And, and thank you for that, Sarah. It's good to get some myths busted as well. So uh, I am going to now hand over to Martin. And um, we are slightly ahead of time. Um, so after this session, we'll just have a very quick break um, and we'll start the following session at 5.40 because there may be some people who want to join just for that session. So I'm going to hand over to Martin now for Roots into Nursing. And I know we covered some of this um, in some of the questions. So this hopefully will expand on some of those questions. So thank you, Martin. Thank you, Angie. Um, Bruno and I, everyone. And, um, uh, my name is Martin Riley and I'm Deputy Director for Education Commission and Quality um, in Health Education Improvement Wales. And um, in essence, um, we commission the nurse education and other health professional education, along with a range of other things. So what I wanted to do today is explain to you a little bit about how the courses are structured in Wales, the support that you'll get and, you, and the opportunities for you. So if I could have the next slide, please. Thank you. So we've recently moved from five um, education providers of nurse education in Wales to seven. Um, so you can study to be a nurse in Cardiff University, the University of South Wales, Swansea University, Aberystwyth University, Bang University, Wrexham University and the Open University. In terms of location, there's more than that. So we have bases in Newport, Cardiff, Treforest, Swansea, Carmarthen, Aberystwyth, Bangor, St Asaph, Wrexham, and also hubs dotted throughout Powys as well. In addition to this, you can study um, via distance learning with the Open University. All the universities now as well offer blended learning, so a lot of it will be in person, but some of it will be delivered online. And in, in that as well, these universities actually run a range of health professional courses. So they run midwifery, um, they run OT, um, they may run physiotherapy, um, ODPs, dietetics, 
um, speech and language therapy, healthcare sciences, etc. So when you're in university, you won't just be learning as an adult nurse. You'll be work. You'll be learning with the other three fields or up to the other three fields, and also some other people, students training to be health professionals. And the universities will teach some things together. And they've all got absolutely fantastic simulation facilities so that they can prepare you for practice and your placements and work in a safe environment with other students. So this is great because you then learn in a group and you understand the value of being a nurse, the uniqueness that you bring to that multidisciplinary team and to the patient. But you also learn about the value and the impact of other health professionals as as well. So you will be learning in an environment which actually replicates um, that which you will be working in um, when you graduate. We've got lots of different bases because we understand that some students may find it hard to travel. So we're working on the um, ethos of if you can train in a local university, um, you can do your placements in a local health board or local settings, then actually that will really encourage you to work in that locality when you graduate. It will also give you an understanding of um, the local economics, the local patient needs, the local community, and that actually will di differ across Wales. So there's some real advantages there. Um, there is a wide range of routes into, um, into training. Um, you can apply through UCAS with your A-levels, be it you have um, three A's, um, three B's or, or three C's. There are universities that will accept sort of th those grades. Um, you can go in through further education and I'll come on to that in a little, in a little while because we're building really strong links there. Um, you can actually be a healthcare support worker. Um, if you're an existing healthcare support worker, there's lots of opportunities for you to train and develop. And actually, if you wanted to get yourself a role as a healthcare support worker, you can actually then learn there. We've um, we've expanded our level four nurse support, support worker qualification, and that's now developed, delivered in four universities and also in um, group Antrithlomeni in North Wales. And that's a great opportunity to get your level four qualification, which is in essence now mapped to the first year of the nursing degree, which enables you to jump on straight onto a second year of a degree program um, in many universities across Wales. We're really, really excited about a couple of schemes that we started this year, which is Fast Track to Nursing and Healthcare Connect, which I'll come out onto in a little while. I mentioned earlier on, you don't have to stu study full time. Um, if you wanted to study part time, you could, and then you can actually help supplement your studies with um, a part time job. Um, Sarah's already talked a little bit about the funding, so I won't go into the funding. And she's talked about the four fields of nursing and adult obviously being the biggest fields. And everyone knows sort of about the child fields. We've got a major focus at the moment on mental health and learning disability. And you will know through people being a lot more open um, through social media and other, and other um, avenues. And actually perhaps from personal experience or family or friend experience that the real focus on, on, on mental health and we've got the strategic mental health workforce plan and we're increasing the, num the numbers and therefore the opportunities for students to come onto the mental health field. I think probably what's not so visible to potential students is the learning um, disability um, field. And actually we are offering really good taster sessions now. So for example, if you jump onto a course and you're studying to be an adult nurse, we're offering taster sessions around um, learning disabilities, raising the awareness of it and offering placement opportunities in learning disability settings with the opportunity for you to total transfer field at the end of the first year. Because what we've actually got in Wales, whilst there's four separate fields, the first year is fairly generic and that you can sort of change fields at the end of the first year. Can I have the next slide, please? Thank you. So what we're looking for in Wales is our health staff to be represented of the population. 
and therefore we need our student population to be representative of the general population. So we want people studying in Wales made up of a range of ethnicities, a range of ages, range of genders, etc., so that we can actually um, replicate the population of Wales, and then we get a workforce that really, really understands patient needs, etc. And nursing is about positivity and about celebrating the differences nurses make. And you've heard today from, from Sue and others around the fulfilment they have in their roles. We've talked about a bit about some of the um, some of the qualifications you need, but actually we've got a real focus and universities are now geared up to supporting students from disadvantaged backgrounds and to value those non-academic skills and qualifications that people have. So for example, we may have applicants that have been in care. We may have applicants who are young carers and with protect, protected characteristic that have picked up skills that are actually transferable into some university tariff points to get an interview and to get onto sort of programmes. Um, as a commissioner, we're really, really conscious of student wellbeing and we invest money and the universities invest in wellbeing services to support students. And as a commissioner, we collect information on that to make sure that our students are being cared for and supported. This isn't just about support whilst you're in academia, whilst you're learning. Um, training to be a nurse means you're going to spend half your time out on placement. That might be exciting to some, it might be daunting to others. So the simulation and the preparedness that we're, that's undertaken in universities is really, really important. But also, whilst you're out on placement, we have practice assessors, practice supervisors, and practice education facilitators to support students on that placement circuit. And what we've been doing in HRW and working with the university and the health boards and wider is around diversifying where you can go on placement. Um, so this is across um, this is across different sectors. We've got placements in nursing homes, in the community, in GP practices, in the independent sector across mental health services uh, and, and wider. So having that breadth of placement experience would be great because it'll help you decide where you want to work and you'll be able to pick up those learning outcomes in lots of different settings. Um, this is what you do in university about preparing with other groups of students is then replicated when you're out on placements because all the universities are geared up to give in, to develop, to deliver in multi-professional placements so that you're learning together in practice with other students as well. So being a nurse, you're a part of the nursing community, but you're part of that wider community and that team around the patient as well. Um, next slide, please. So 23-24, we'll see record numbers of nursing students um, in Wales. And the numbers have increased further for 24, 25. So there's lots of opportunities for you to apply to nursing courses because um, we have more and more places available. I mentioned um, the, the, the focus on support in mental health services and also around disability nurses. Now, traditionally, we just worked with universities and commission places with universities, but we're developing a lot more collaboration now with FE colleges across Wales. And we're offering a lot more opportunities for support workers to actually become qualified nurses. Um, so far this year, we've recruited 174 support workers um, onto um, programmes. That's the highest number ever in Wales. Next year, we're hoping to get that up to um, 400, which, which, which will be great. If we could go to the next slide, please, because I just want to talk about these exciting sort of opportunities. So if you've got your A-levels, it's great. You can go straight on to a programme. Um, and if you haven't, there's still ways to get on to degree programmes in Wales. But if you've gone to an FE college 
and actually you may have just missed out or you've been unsuccessful with developing programs to support you. So we've done this in collaboration with a Nairon Bevan Health Board. We've done it in collaboration with the University of South Wales, um, with Cardiff and Vale College and College Gwent and the RCM. And this is basically the development of a six month module that you will, that students can undertake. They do a day a week um, in university, um, sorry, in, in an FE college. And they've also got the opportunity to undertake some paid work as a support worker to pick up that practical experience. What you can see there is six of the seven people that are on an initial cohort doing this. And what the messages we're getting from these um, students is that if it wasn't for this course, they probably wouldn't be training. They wouldn't want to go on. They wouldn't have the opportunity to go on to become a nurse and they'd probably be doing something else outside healthcare. The fact is, is that these are people with the right values, the right behaviours that want to care and we're giving them this opportunity. So we will in September be running more of these programmes. Um, the numbers will be bigger and we're developing these opportunities as well further in North Wales, in West Wales and South West Wales. So because we're talking to a lot of other FE colleges, um, this is a great way to when you think perhaps the opportunity has gone, actually we're developing these opportunities for you to come in and learn with us um, and to become nurses. If I can move on to the next slide, please. Um, so. I've talked about the opportunities to become a nurse, but when you're qualified, it doesn't stop there. Um, Sarah talked about the opportunities for careers. So what we've done in HRW, we've quadrupled the budget to support health professionals once they're qualified to specialise into those areas that you've got a passion in. And that might be in critical care, it might be in genomics, it might be in prescribing, you might want to go and work as a community nurse, you may want to work in primary care, you may have a desire to work in, in cancer services, etc. So we've got budget to support health professionals develop their career into the areas they want. So becoming a nurse is absolutely fantastic, but then there's great opportunities in Wales to develop your career and specialise after that. So I've got a few quotes there around um, around um, prescribing and around um, around blood products. So there's some really, really good opportunities to develop your career once you're a qualified nurse. If we can move on to the next slide, please. Um, we all our universities have September intakes, which are really, really popular. But actually, if you want to do apply for a course in March, there's still opportunities. So um, in Aberystwyth, you can still join um, the HE Cert programme, which is the level four programme. There's opportunities there in Bang University, Open University, University of South Wales, Swansea University and Wrexham University. They are still accepting applications for March. They're still running open days. So there's still opportunities for you to apply and, and get onto a programme sort of in March. So that's just a flavour really of, of what we do in terms of commissioning, the variety of opportunities you have to study, where you can study, and a little bit about how you will be supported in university in preparing for practice and whilst you're out on placements to become a qualified nurse, the different fields you've got open to you, and then also huge opportunities for you once you've qualified. So uh, Angie, I can hand back to you. That's great, thank you, Martin. And I wonder if you'd be up to take a couple of questions that have come in, if that's okay. Um, yes. So I'm gonna hand over to Antonia. Thanks. Thanks, Angie and Martin. So um, just a few questions before we move on. The key themes have been around entry requirements and the flexibility of study while people are working. And um, we'll cover some um, of those in a bit. But just the first one um, from Sharon, she says she's nowhere near a university. And she's currently working full time and looking to change her career uh, on the flexible study options available to her. I know you mentioned about hybrid and flexible learning within universities. 
So, so there's so there's part time courses available with the Open University, but in addition to that, um, we are developing something called dispersed learning contracts, um, which are part time, and which are actually more embedded in the community because I understand that when people are working they can't give up those jobs and it's sometimes difficult for them to travel to a university so what we're doing is we're developing courses and in poets it's working really well at the moment where the education is delivered close to home so for example um, university lectures from Bangor will go into local towns in Powys and actually deliver education and training there and the placements will be close to where you're working. So, so we're developing more of those flexible models, models because we understand life commitments. We understand that um, some students will need to keep on working. So we're developing those flexible models. Swans University, for example, is developing a model whereby you study in university and the hours are between 9.30 and 3, very, very intensively, and then that means that there's more time available to hold down part time jobs and for family and different things as well. So um, I can provide more information on this, but there are those flexible models that we are developing. Great, time for one more, Angie. Please. So um, anonymous question here. I'm working with the NHS at the moment as a healthcare sport worker and I have a level two. Uh, do I need any other qualifications to do my nursing degree? Obviously, we're going to be touching on qualifications shortly with the admissions tutors, but um, just over to you, Martin, with that one. No, absolutely. And um, I think the key to this is 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 FE and uh, and what sort of um, what you can do with sort of in, in further education. And actually, um, look at Careersville. Um, because there's lots of really good information on Careersville about sort of how how you can study, but it's a myth that you need sort of good A levels to um, to get onto a nursing nursing course, as sort of Sarah said. There's lots of flexible routes, and the Open University also offer lots of routes there. Okay, so thank you both, uh, and again, we will keep trying to answer questions uh, as we go along in the background, so hopefully you will get a response um, to your question within the next few days, um, uh, if, if not, if there's not uh, already straight after this session, and we'll make those live. So big thank you to Martin. Um, we've got two minutes, um, so if you want to have a quick comfort break, and then we'll come back together at 22. So see you all soon. Thank you very much, Martin.
Okay, welcome back everyone. Uh, sorry, slight delay then, um, but I hope you like the clock counting down. I thought that was really cool. So we're going to have our next session now, which is looking at um, admi admissions and how um, when you apply to nursing, the people at the other end of that application, how they look at your application and they're going to try and give you some tips and things that they're looking for. We've got some admissions tutors from a number of universities, um, but they're not here representing their own university as such today, uh, although they might make a, a reference to it. What they're hoping to achieve is just give you some general ideas of what all universities look look for and uh, just give you some guidance. So again, the chat bar will be open and I wonder if we could see the university tutors, please, our guests today. So I'd like to uh, welcome Chloe and Amanda and also Russell. And is it just three? Amanda, Joe, Chloe and Russell. Is that right? Three of you? Brilliant. And I think Zoe is also here somewhere as well. One of our students who may be joining the panel. Hi, Zoe, I can just see you have just come online. So I'm going to ask you, first of all, um, I'm just going to sort of give give you the, the floor, if I may, for a little while. Um, and I just would, you know, if you could just sort of for a few minutes, introduce yourself and also a little bit about um, the course and how you can support our target audience today. So um, who would like to go first? Shall I, shall I go in reverse at, um, at alphabetical order? So Zoe, obviously you're, you're um, spared this question for a little while. Um, so if I could come perhaps to Russell first, um, yeah. okay. if you could just um, give us a, a bit yeah. of a flavour of what, what uh, um, your world is like. My name is Russell Jones yeah, and I work for Wrexham University. Um, I'm one of the mental health lecturers, so we're always looking to recruit mental health students. Um, and we see people from all walks of life, really. Um, we encourage people to stay from school and we see people in the 30s, 40s, even 50s, really. And I've seen some of the questions on the chat line about um, some of the qualifications. Um, people do worry about maths and English GCSE and which level of course that they've done before. And it is very frustrating, I know, um, but it's always best just to speak to us. You know, you can email the admissions teams and we will give you the answers. And you don't always have to have maths and English GCSE. We can do an alternative qualification through our university. And I, th I think other universities will do the same, really. Um, but the qualities we're looking for is people who are good, um, very good people, you know, who uh, will listen and learn and are so uh, very curious and to try and understand why people become so low in mood, why people struggle with their mental health and their physical health as well. And um, we've seen some fantastic students come through over the years, really, and they've developed and we support them in the clinical placement area um, and so people don't need to feel alone you know and if they have any problems they can speak to their personal tutors so it's a fantastic career I would certainly recommend anybody go in for nursing I, I trained in the 1980s um, at certificate level that actually won't be started and we moved on and I've had um, lots of training on the job um, through the North Wales Health Board through Bangor University and through Wrexham Union University um, and and I've gone into tutoring just in the last seven years, really. So um, that's me, really. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Russell. Good to hear from you. And I wonder yes. if I could come to Liz Elizabeth uh, next, please. If you could introduce yourself, please. Hi, my name's uh, Elizabeth Mason, Liz Mason. I'm from Bangor University. Uh, I've been involved in admissions for a significant amount of time now, longer than I care to remember, maybe. And um, I think for me, uh, the most important thing is talking to the university, finding out, applying to open days and discussing, you know, your own particular requirements um, in terms of your application process, qualities and values, experience, entry qualifications and anything else really that's worrying you. There's nothing we haven't heard before and we can always, you know, help and support you to find a solution. 
Thank you. Thanks, Liz. And I wonder if I could come to Chloe next, please, if you could introduce yourself. Hi, everybody. Good evening. I'm Chloe Farrington. I'm one of the senior lecturers at Wrexham University and I am a trained adult nurse. So, um, yes, yeah, so I'm going to uh, tell you a little bit about the course. So we obviously we look for um, 2,300 hours of placement hours and 2,300 hours of teaching at university and um, it sounds like a lot but over the three years it's not too bad and I think what's really really nice about the nursing course is that you're going to have a really wide variety of placements so you'll get to kind of get a feel for what type of nursing you'd really like to do because I know myself I went in and thought my first placement was a stroke ward I thought oh I'd love to be a stroke nurse and then went to a diabetic ward oh I'd love to be a diabetic nurse and then ended up in A&E for over 10 years so it's um I think that what's really nice about the course is uh, you do get a, a really wide range of experience from different areas um, and as Russell and Elizabeth have said you know no question is too much for us just get in touch with us we can help you and um, we normally can find a way around things to um, support you and help you you know gain entry into the university um, within reason but I'm absolutely sure we can help you in some way or another or guide you in the right direction so um, please don't hesitate to get in touch with any of us I'm sure um, we'd be more than happy to help. Thanks Chloe and um, that's that's really good to hear isn't it that you know I'm hearing very positive this is about helping people to achieve their dream not putting barriers up in the way um, so uh, Amanda perhaps if you could introduce yourself please. Noswitha Pawb, good evening. I'm, my name is Amanda Jones and I'm the Principal Lead and Head of Healthcare Education at Aberystwyth University. So I think what we're looking for, as the same as my colleagues have spoken tonight, is somebody who's caring and compassionate and will show that support, that natural support towards the patients that will be in their care. And one of the analogies that I use with all of our new students is some will take the um, motorway and get from A to B straight away. Some will need to take the coastal path. And that means that some may need to take an interruption of studies. And, you know, I'm sure we've all got students on our programme who are expectant mums at the moment, for example, um, or may things are just too difficult for them at the moment and may need to step away and come back in six or 12 months time. And that's totally fine. What we want is to get you to that end goal of becoming a registered nurse. Dear. Thanks. Thank you, Jill. So I think um, for this session, I'm going to sort of fire probably different questions at you, if you don't mind, because it, it, it's collectively, hopefully we'll get through a number of questions that we get asked a lot in HIW. And I think um, we've also going to have some questions in the chat bar as well. But before I do that, um, and I'm particularly interested in what you as admissions tutors are particularly looking for in those applications. Um, but if I could come to Zoe first, um, you know, how did you go about choosing a course uh, or choosing your course, I should say, shouldn't I? <laughs> um, I think, well, for me, I've, I always wanted to be a nurse. Like for whenever I can remember, my mum will tell you stories about me when I was little, putting bandages on people or whatever. Um, but I picked Aberystwyth specifically um, and I did look around the majority of other Welsh universities, but I picked Aberystwyth because of how new the course was and because obviously it's only the second cohort, my cohort, um, so it's brand new. And also it's right by the beach and if you walk across the bridge, you can see the sea and it's the most beautiful views ever. So that's why I picked it. But I can't really tell you why I wanted to be a nurse because that's all I've known, really. <laughs> That's good enough reason, isn't it? You know, and and uh, my my one of my children studied at Aberystwyth and lived right on the front for the first year, so it is a fabulous place to be. So uh, thank you. So if I can come to the um, the sort of more admission tutor type questions, um, I'm happy for anyone to to um, ask uh, to answer this one. But um, what kind of things 
are you looking for as admissions tutors to see in that personal statement, I suppose, in, in, in particular? But what are you looking for in particular? We talked about earlier, um, you know, did you have to, did, did you need loads and loads of experience? And Sarah gave some, some examples of what experience could actually mean in, in, in reality. Um, but uh, Liz, if I can hand over to you, please give us some pointers. We're on mute, Liz. First time today. So the, the most important thing for me is when you're reading that UCAS application and that personal statement, is that there's evidence that they've done some research. The applicant has actually done some research into, firstly, the field of nursing that they want to go into, that maybe that they've attended some open days to find out that information. They've looked on NHS websites, et cetera. And secondly, the, one of the most important things is that everybody will tell us that they're kind and caring, but it's following that up. You know, I can demonstrate that I've got the right qualities for nursing because and give examples of why they can show that they're caring, why they can show that they're empathetic or compassionate. But also, most importantly, and following up from that is when they come for interview, it's not just about having those buzzwords and those six C's. It's really about understanding what they mean and having some examples where you could then elaborate on those. So, you know, you can reel off the six C's, but then the interviewer is going to say, well, could you tell me a little bit about that? Or, you know, why is that important? Or how is that demonstrated? What examples have you got for when you've been kind, caring, compassionate, courageous? So I think that's the most important thing. I suppose if I was to give a pet hate, if I can, is where they put in a little bit cheesy quotes about Florence Nightingale. And yes, maybe she was important to nursing, undoubtedly. However, things have moved on and the profession is very, very different. So it's really about being focused, researched and being able to support what you're saying with core examples. It's really key. Thank you. That's really important. That so. Um, really good to hear from that. And I, I could see the other um, tutors sort of agreeing with you as you were talking. So really, really important. Do your research. Excuse the dog bark. Uh, do your research. Make the statements, but following up with the examples of how you can evidence that. So that's, that's a real good takeaway. So if I could um, just expand on that bit, actually, the personal statement bit. Um, is there anything else you would like to see in those personal statements? So we've evidence of having that um, insight into what you're letting yourself in for. You know, you've done your, your research, you've done those examples. What else? If I can handle over to Amanda, please. Thank you. Yeah, I think tell us a little bit about yourself. We really want to get to know you as a person. What makes you stand out in your application different to um, anybody else who's applying? And in particular, maybe demonstrating what field of nursing that you really want to apply for. Why have you chosen that field of nursing? Rather than just saying, I want to go in for nursing, show us why you want to do mental health nursing or adult field of nursing, because it really gives us a flavour of the type of character and the person that you are and that will potentially make your application stand out more than another application will. Thank you and, and picking up on that can you actually apply for more than one field of nursing could you apply for adults could you uh, and mental health for example is that something you would advise or does it come back to knowing where you want to go? Liz? You can, there's nothing to stop you doing that, but it makes your personal statements maybe a little less focused. And we hold, all of our universities hold so many open days and different opportunities to find out about the field of nursing. So it's using those open days, which come before the UCAS deadline to really go and talk to people. And if you're unsure, that really should provide that clarity you know, whether you go and talk to Russell about mental health, you know, I've done many open days with Russell, you know, talk to Russell about mental health or talk to me about adult nursing or child field nursing. We can give you that insight and we can guide you to which, you know, 
we can't guide you to which one to do, but we can offer suggestions as to which you may be better suited for or better to apply for. I think that's really, really key advice because I think um, a lot of people might think, oh, I want to get into nursing, so I'm going to apply for all four fields necessarily. But I think hearing from you guys to say, actually, that might not be the best way forward, that you, re you need to do that pre pre-work so that when you write your application it is really focused and coming back to your point Liz right at the beginning is it is that I want to do this because I've done my research I'm really focused and I can follow up with examples so I think that you know hearing that from all of you is is really um, quite powerful so I'm going to come to Zoe if I may and actually sort of from the flip side of that you were obviously successful getting into um in, into university how did you approach that? Um, or, and if, you know, and are there any tips for the students from, from your perspective? Um, I would just say get as much random experience as possible. Um, I was lucky that I managed to get some GP practice experience just because family friend was a GP. So that's really lucky. But most people obviously won't get that kind of experience. So, um, Getting some kind of time spent in a care home is really good. Um, anything like that, really, just like p working with people, any kind of experience that involves working with people would be brilliant for your personal statement. But and also um, to talk about yourself quite a lot, um, a lot of personal statements. I think people are quite sort of reserved about the way that they are, but the personal statement is supposed to impress people about you and what you're like. Um, so you need to big yourself up on the personal statement and show off that you know what you're talking about. You really want to be part of the field and all of that, rather than just saying that you want to be a nurse, but not really going into the details as to why, really. Thank you. That's, that's, <laughs> that's really good. There's something, it, there's something in that sometimes we're not very good at promoting ourselves when we need to promote ourselves. We, we all tend to be a little bit sort of stand, stand back a little bit. So I absolutely go for it is what I'm hearing, I think. Um, so back to um, sort of the admissions tutors, please. Um, can you just give us a few pointers on, on what the process actually is? And it probably does differ from university to university slightly, but can you give us a, a sort of general feel and, and also timelines? Because um, I'm also going to um, ask you a couple of questions about the March cohorts as well. So um, I don't know who wants to take the timeline, uh, sorry, take the timeline selection process, please. I, I can do that, Angie. Thanks, Liz. It, it, it does differ depending on the programme of study that you're going to apply for, because we have, you know, distance dispersed um, healthcare support worker routes. But if you were talking about the sort of traditional UCAS entry for the three year in-person course, you know, UCAS opens early September. And we start taking applications at that point, which I'm sure Wrexham and Aberystwyth and the other Welsh universities do as well. And it tends to be slow because what I've noticed over the years is that UCAS application is very much embedded within that sixth form work and particularly for access to HE students. So it forms part and parcel of that sort of that lead up to Christmas. And you may get some early applications, but then get this sort of little bit of an avalanche after Christmas. The university site, uh, the UCAS cycle closes on the 31st of January. But I think what I've noticed now is that from particularly for health courses and um, because of the opportunities that are available, we don't tend to close now midwifery May, but nursing programmes may well stay open, uh, you know, and then you go into things like UCAS Extra, and then of course there's Clearing, which is in August. So we, you know, we take our applicants through that process as do all of the universities. We offer different forms of interviews. I think every university does a slightly different form of university, but we all abide by the same sort of principles of look, looking for those qualities and values. And so it's the selection process, but it's, Unless you're already holding those qualifications, then you do have to wait until confirmation and clearing, which is always a bit of a grisly time for universities and you know applicants as well. And I think at that, I always say 
there's there's some results that we can't do anything about because A-level results are released on a particular time and they're embargoed. Many people who are doing maybe access to HE courses, they tend to know where they're accruing their credits and what that profile's looking at. And it's at that point you can start to have conversations with the admissions tutor, with the admissions team, you, um, and then you can start to gauge where you're up to. The other thing I think is really important as part of that cycle is the um, UCAS open days, offer holder days. That is a really important part for applicants, as well as any other days that universities will hold. We all hold mature applicant days. So there's a whole process that goes behind it. And it is underpinned by you know, the different departments within the university, but largely we do all the same thing, but in a slightly different way. Thanks, Liz. That's really, really helpful. So that's the standard, but I wonder if I can come to Chloe um, and I wonder if you could give us any details about the March cohort, potentially, please. Yeah, so um, what type of things do you want to know? Sorry. I, I think, you know, for nursing, there are some universities that run a September cohort and a March cohort, and yeah. I'm quite conscious that, you know, we may be we're still within an application window for some universities yeah. so and, and I, I don't think um if, if we could just talk about that for a little while that would yeah, be really helpful course. thank you um so yes yeah, so um as uh, Rectum University we are still accepting applications for the March intake um and normally if you can't put it through UCAS at this time um we will accept direct um applicant app applications so uh, that would be throughout through the website i'm not sure about um, the other universities i'm afraid um but we do accept direct applications for the march intake um so the difference between the march and the september intake is the march intake is um quite quite a lot smaller um but you get exactly the same content and experience in the university so you'll be taught exactly the same as september intake it's just a smaller cohort that's all um so um we we tend to um try and get these applications um through as quick as possible so offer you an interview date as soon as we can um get you interviewed and offer within um a week to two weeks to make sure that you know we can get everything processed as quick as possible and make sure that you're prepared ready to start in, in march because i know that it, it is you know time is ticking and there's a lot to organize when you're starting university so we do try to work quite quickly to get get these through um mm -hmm. But yeah, is that enough information, Angie? Sorry. Uh, no, that's perfect. Thank you. And um, we will put a list of universities that we know are still taking March applications as well, just for, for ease in the next day or so. Um, but thank you for that. So just to, you know, just to summarise, there are September cohorts, there are some smaller March cohorts. Mm. The process is the same. It's the same standard. The course is the same. It just runs at a different time. Can I come back to you then, Chloe? Want to add anything sorry i just forgot to add that um just be aware that some of the march intakes are only taking certain fields of mm -hmm. nursing so for example we only accept adult and mental health in the march intakes but we do accept adult mental health and child in the september so just double check which field of nursing you're interested in as well before applying thank you thank you so I'm going to move on to the interview process um, and I just wonder if I could come to Zoe first. And I suppose the first question was, did you have to have an interview for your course? And if so, how did you prepare <laughs> for it? <laughs> um, yes, there was an interview. Um, preparing for it was it was I sort of approached it like a job interview more than anything, because um, I didn't really know what it was going to be like at all. Um, my sixth form actually provided like mock interview setups for us, um, although the nursing interview is completely different to any other form of university interview. So it didn't really help an awful lot, but it helped with uh, actually having how you talk to someone in an interview, because it's very different to how you talk to someone in like a normal conversation. Um, I just sort of I did a bit of research like um, the six C's and things like that, which are probably going to come up at some point. Um, generic questions like why do you want to be a nurse and come up with an answer for that um, and know what experiences I've had that I can 
call upon should a question arise about teamwork or communication or using one of the C's or something like that. Um, like the generic questions that you're probably going to get asked, but they always throw in questions that you have absolutely no, you're not prepared for at all because you have no idea that they're going to ask it. Um, so you just have to hope that you've got enough basic information about yourself that you can answer that question with really. Um, but yeah, they're, they're not as scary as they seem. <laughs> That's really good <laughs> advice. And maybe if I can ask the admissions tutors, you know, those questions perhaps that um, Zoe might not have thought were coming, but it's on, on a serious note, how, how, what are the sorts of questions um, that might be asked and, and how best can people sort of prepare for interview? So if I come to Chloe first. So um, as Zoe said, there's obviously going to be a question about, you know, why do you want to be a registered nurse? Why have you chosen this career path and what qualities and values can you bring into nursing? Um, obviously, um, the NMC or the Nursing Midwifery Council um, is really, really important. So it's worth doing your research on that and looking at the code um, prior to interview. I think um, doing some like prior research, looking at some journals, articles of um, important subjects at the moment in healthcare is, is quite important. And as previously mentioned, you know, really looking into that field of nursing that you're interested in, because we want that to shine in your interview. We want to know that if you want to be a mental health nurse, we want you to know about that subject and prove that you you know you're right to be a mental health nurse um and that you've got the passion for it rather than um you just going in it because someone said they think I'd be a good nurse <laughs> it's you know you've got to show that passion and shine through in your interview um but yeah I think it's just really kind of like you say selling yourself and you know giving experience behind why you know you could say oh, I'm a really caring person but why are you a caring person what examples have you got can you tell us and you know we we're not there to catch you out we really want you to do well in these interviews and you know we're really you know we're your cheerleaders at the other end of the either computer screen or side of the room depending on how we do the interview um and I know that in Wrexham University we will um, try to give you some prompts if you get stuck and things like that because it can be a really really nerve-wracking time having an interview we totally understand that so um, we try to help you relax as much as possible and you know do as well as you can in your interview. Thank you Chloe that that's really really helpful is there anything any anyone else would like to um, add to that um, I think uh, Russell and Amanda, yeah, I, I think, think you both have. So Russell um, first. Yeah, we just want to bring the best candidates really. So we will try and put them at their ease and then we will offer some small prompts along the way really. And um, some of the students will ask us questions, you know, what can you do for us as a university? And I think, wow, that's a fantastic question. You know, uh, students want to know that they're, you know, if they study with us, it's the best place for them. So it's great. And um, yeah, it's about the person being themselves really. And not, uh, you know, not having to put an act on and uh, those are the best interviews really but i think coming to an open day is a huge advantage some students they come to interviews and they haven't been to the open day and it shows sometimes you know and that's that's, that's a bit disappointing uh, but that's yeah that's me great thank you good advice mm -hmm. um amanda if i can come to you yeah i mean one of the questions that's all we were saying sometimes they'll ask questions that they weren't expecting and it might be something around exploring how people cope when they're stressed or under pressure so we occasionally ask a question and say you know give us an example of of when you were challenged or a difficult situation and how you coped in that situation and um, like Russell says as well the students our candidates can ask us questions around well-being and supporting them as students as well and just saying you know what well-being services do you offer within your university and rightly so they need that assurance yeah. from us as a university that we are going to look after them because they are coming on to um, a nursing program and obviously we want to demonstrate that care and compassion back to them as our students as well. That's really helpful, Amanda. I'm going to come back um, with a question on the wellbeing support. So if you can hold that thought for a moment um, while I, I bring Liz back in, please. So thank you. 
I think one of the most important things if you are applying to university is to make sure that you understand the kind of interview format that that university provides, um, because we all do things differently. Um, obviously, you know, we've moved on from COVID, but we had to make some significant changes to, to our interview processes. And I know that some universities are sort of changing what they're going to be doing. The principles remain the same, what we're looking for remain the same, but it's that actual process of interview. And that may also differ between sort of fields of nursing as well as between um, HEIs. The other thing for applicants to remember is we may have stakeholders in our interview panel. So, you know, that could be two people, it could be an interview panel, it could be multiple mini interviews. So it's important to understand that you could have people who are part of the health board or people who use services as part of that interview panel. And I think that's really important to remember. So double check what to expect before you turn up. Thank you. So it's coming back to it's that preparedness all the time, mm -hmm. isn't it? You know, taking it right back, doing your research, understand that that course is the one that you really want in the university that you really want and, and absolutely be clear. And that will also come across in your interviews. So that preparedness is so, so important. So thank you. I'm, I will come back to the wellbeing question, um, but before I do so, Amanda, I wonder if I could ask you a question, please, because we hear a lot about the Welsh language at the moment. Obviously, it is really, really important in Wales. Um, uh, part of my team runs the, uh, the Train Work Live campaigns, which is sort of outside of Wales. And one of the questions we get asked a lot is, do I have to speak Welsh to work in Wales? Um, and similar question in terms of um, the Welsh language in, in being a student nurse as well. Um, we know bilingual skills are important, but Amanda, I just wonder what your advice would be for people who um, have very low confidence in using the Welsh language or, or maybe can't use it at all. How much of a difference does it make, but how important is it to try and perhaps dip your toe in the water a little bit with the Welsh language? Yeah, absolutely. It's not um, a necessity that you can speak any um, Welsh language at all when you're coming into the profession. But bear in mind that you are going to be working on and um, being educated and training in a locality throughout Wales where you are going to come in contact with service users and patients who are Welsh speakers. So most of the universities throughout Wales will have Welsh language opportunities embedded throughout all of their programmes to encourage students um, to be confident in using some of that Welsh language skills. And it's not about making sure that students or, or making them um, fluent in Welsh, it's about having the skills to have basic conversational Welsh language with their patients. So if it's something like, um, you know, the word for pain, point and pen tossed, you know, um, pain in my head or a bad head. It's, it's about getting those basic skills so that it supports the care that they provide their patients. Um, and we do it in a fun way, as I'm sure all of my colleagues do in their institutions, what we offer, you know, even things like singing head, shoulders, knees and toes through the medium of Welsh, just to make them fun so that students have the opportunities to, to so we all, we all feel silly together in the room and we just join in, but it really makes a difference to the care that they provide their patients and what I often tell students is even if you're caring for somebody and they ask you, are you a Welsh speaker? And you say, um, no, Rundesky, I'm learning. Most service users will see that as an opportunity and a challenge whilst they're in your care to say, right, Bach, I'll have you speaking Welsh in no time now. Um, and that makes wonders for the nurse patient relationship as well. I think that's, yeah, that, that, description that you gave about you know it's all about being positive about the Welsh language will help you learn we're not expecting you to be fluent but but you know a, a few basics are, are really great and certainly our our Welsh language officer in, in HEIW that's exactly the line he takes you know a little bit because everything is very stepwise uh, and we're not expecting people to do their clinical consultations in the Welsh language and the opportunity through um, through university to learn Welsh or to improve Welsh at, at whatever level is going to be there for you. So thank you. 
Um, I think, yeah, I'm, I'm conscious of time and I think we're sort of coming to the end of our um, uh, of our session today. And I wonder if I could um, come back to, to Zoe first and, and a similar question. Sorry, no, I missed a question. I am sorry. I was going to ask you about the well-being and mental health support in the universities. If I could just come back to that one, because you mentioned it, Amanda. Um, you know, rightly so, students are asking about, you know, that. And you know, we, we have recognised in the last few years, you know, that people's well-being and mental health is just so, so important. Um, and training to be a nurse and in your career as a nurse, that is particularly important to keep yourselves well um, so that you can care for others. So um, I don't know if anyone wants to pick up on that question. Chloe? Yeah, so um, in Wrexham, um, every student would have their own personal tutor to start. So they are your go to person if you've got any problems, concerns. They look after you throughout your three years doing your degree course or whatever course you've chosen. Um, and you have um, meetings with them as regularly as you want to make sure that everything's going smoothly academic wise. But also we know about home life if there's any problems so we can support you in any way we can and direct you to the right services um we've got loads and loads of support services counseling mental health services and um there's even you know like student unions and things like that that um have well-being um meetings you know and you know go and play i don't know even i don't know netball football to kind of get you in a team and involve you in things as well to keep you happy um but we also have um other services that we have like a system where you can text at 24 7 if you've got any problems with mental health or um you're really struggling so um there's loads and loads of services there to help you but i think the main one is that you will have a dedicated lecturer and um, that will support you throughout your studies for the whole three years and we want you to do well we want to get you there. We want we want to see you graduate at the end. So we'll be there to support you and head you in the right direction um, throughout your three years of study. Thank you. And that, that is really good to hear. And, and the way you summed that at the end, you know, we want we want you to achieve and we're going to do everything we, we possibly can to make that happen. Um, so I think that's a really good message. And, and the wellbeing support now is is superb in universities. Um, throughout throughout the universities but obviously to the, the nursing programs um the, the doors there for you so um my last question to all of you starting with zoe i'm just going to ask you to sum up in a, a very short few words um what's the advice that you would give to someone thinking of applying for a nursing program we've heard lots of advice but, uh, you know, maybe the, the three top tips, like I asked the, the previous panel. But I wonder if I could start with you, Zoe, because you're doing the top tips from a successful applicant into, into um, nursing. So and you're in the first year at the moment, aren't you? Is that correct? Yes. 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 So what, what's your so application time was quite uh, quite recent for you. So, top <laughs> tips. Um. Well, my first one would be to get involved in anything that you can to enhance your application. Um, no matter how big or small it is, anything will help. Um, also to attend open days and talk to lecturers and people who are at the university, talk to the students union, talk to lecturers and people. Because funnily enough, um, my interview was conducted by one of the lecturers and he remembered me from one of the open days which was quite cool we had a lovely chat about the open day for about 20 minutes in my interview so that was really good um they will remember you if you stick out <laughs> <laughs> um and also just be really like friendly and open about to everybody that you meet that has anything remotely to do with your degree that you're hoping to go to or um work experiences that you're part of or anything like that um just be completely i want to do nursing just prove that you want to do nursing in every way all of that really just be yourself as well fantastic thank you zoe <laughs> so i'm um, amanda your top tips please 
Yeah, I think believe in yourself to start with. You know, most people think I'm not going to be able to do this. I can't do this. And I think our role within the university is to support you and be that scaffolding around you to say you really can do this. I've been a registered nurse for over 30 years and it's gone in in a flash um, and it's gone so quickly. Um, be honest with yourself if you are struggling come and talk to one of us you know make sure um, if we don't know we can't help you and I think having um, approachable staff um, is an excellent key within all organisations for for nursing you know we're, we're all nurses um, so you know you can knock on our door and you can ask us a question and I think my final one would be ask lots and lots of questions. Thank you thanks Amanda I'm going around my screen now so Russell if I could come to you next um, please. Yeah I would say something like sell your personality when you come through the door you know you don't have to be an extrovert but just let us know your skills and you know um just believe in yourself because we understand people are going to be nervous and people are going to be uncertain i like yourself previously amanda i've been in nursing about nearly 40 years i just can't believe how far the profession has taken me it's just incredible what the experience i've had so we're starting off people from day one just you know um sell yourself to us as a person who's a good listener who wants to develop really and is, is trustworthy and honest so that's all I'd say really. Thank yeah. you great Thanks. advice though um, thank you and um, Chloe if I could come to you next please. I think my first piece of advice would be to visit the universities go to every university get a feel for the place get a feel for the lecturers speak to them see you know as Zoe said go to open days we will remember you um, so get a feel for the university um if you can get experience get experience but like we say it's not you know you don't have to but just pull on your transferable skills what are you really good at you may work in a supermarket and think I've got no healthcare experience but you talk to people day in day out you've got that communication skill that you need to be a nurse pull on anything that you've got that you can bring into nursing um like um, I think Amanda said, believe in yourself, you can do it. It is the best career ever. You will not regret going into nursing. Um, I never, ever have and I never will. So good luck, everybody. Thanks, Chloe. That's really great to hear. And the last word I'm going to give to you, Liz, please. Thank you. Yes, I think Chloe sort of stole my thunder there. I was going to talk about work experience, but I still will a little bit because if I'm reading a personal statement or somebody, you know, I ask somebody, so what have you been doing? You know, have got a part time job or something. If they tell me whether they're, you know, a traditional entry student, 18 or a mature student, things like working in McDonald's, working in Asda, you think fantastic teamwork, communication, being polite, being on time lots and lots of transferable skills that you can draw on for that bar work dealing with diff difficult customers we all know that you know not all patients are always going to be the ideal patient you may get difficult patients at times and i think you know using and drawing on those things do some mind mapping to see you know who am i what do i know what can i sell myself with I really liked Zoe's point, you know, I've been doing interviews for a long time and I really liked Zoe's point about preparing for it as if it was a work interview. And presenting as if you're coming to a work interview as well. If this is really, really important for you, you're going to make that effort, you're going to turn up on time, you're going to know where you're going to go. I mean, there's always things that happen and we understand that. But just being on time, being prepared, looking as though you're coming for an interview and we're not expecting Gucci or you know Yves Saint Laurent it doesn't matter it's just having a presentation and the last thing smile I think that's really really important people come in and they're absolutely terrified breathe and smile and I think that's a really important thing Thank you. So some fantastic advice there. Thank you so much for being part of this panel today. I think it's been really insightful. I think people um, watching this today will have um, really taken a lot of tips and uh, things to think about as they go forward and, and 
consider whether they're going to apply to a nursing course today. So thank you so much for your time today, particularly as it's quite late uh, in the day today. So I think that sort of just wraps up today. Um, I do want to give a huge thank you, obviously, to the present presenters and for all your contributions today. It's been really, really fantastic to see you all today. And um, thank you so much for your time. Um, we will, as I keep saying, we will try and answer as many questions as we possibly can. And uh, I think um, I'm going to, before I finally wrap up, I'm going to hand over to Sarah to give you the um uh, the, the results from the polls, I think. Is that correct, Sarah? And then oh. I will close the session formally. Is that correct? Thanks, Angie. Thank you for that. So, yeah, just back to me for a second. So I've thoroughly enjoyed today and I've learned a lot, a lot from our panel and our presenters around the table. But we'd like to know how you have enjoyed the webinar today. So in terms of we're going to use Teams polls for this and three quick questions will pop up on your screen. And we'd like you just to interact and press one of the buttons that you see on screen there. So as a result of this webinar, has your knowledge about the nursing profession? increased so if you wouldn't mind just clicking on yes or no on your screen there so we can gauge the type of responses in terms of us holding a webinar like this for other professions um, and repeating this further on down the line as I said the recording of this session will be made available through our get into nursing web page and also careersville and Tregva alternative for the Welsh speaking um, cohorts out there um, on that those platforms so so has your knowledge increased as a result of this webinar? On to the next question then. So the next question for you then is in terms of this webinar as well. Um, does this webinar mean that this has attracted you to find out more about the nursing profession? So again, we'd just like you to answer yes or no by clicking on the screen there um, as to um, what you think of the session so yes do you feel attracted to finding out more about the nursing profession as a result of this webinar so thank you for the responses so far keep them coming in and as a last quick question we'd just like you to rate your enjoyment of this webinar so on a scale of one to five five being the highest in terms of the stars how would you rate your enjoyment of this webinar and the interaction that you've had today please click on those stars there give us a five if you can um, and we'll use this information obviously to further tailor and offer further career events such as this online in the future. So thank you, Angie, for that. I hope everyone's had an opportunity now to have their point of view and I'll hand back to you. Oh, thank you, Sarah. And um, I just want to say uh, a big thank you for everybody who has taken part today from the presenters to the team, um, at teams across the, um, the workforce teams and the education teams um, and a particular big up to our digital teams who in the background have been making all the magic happen. And um, so amazing. This is a huge team effort um, and all of the people that are answering queries, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's been a, a, a fantastic piece of work um, behind the scenes. So thank everyone for thank you, everyone, for that. So I think just to um, to sum up, I think what we've heard today um, we've talked about Careersville a few times. Uh, for those who haven't had a visit to Careersville, that's our sort of um, digital village, really, where there's a lot of information um, in Careersville that you can know more, including how to get the best out of your application. We've also got our new um, web landing page, our Get Into Nursing page. Um, that is also available as well, and that will take you to various places as well. So that's probably uh, your first point of point of call. For that uh, and like I say we'll we'll continue to answer the chat so I think um for me I think some some key things that I've certainly learned uh, as part of this as well and I think one of the key things that we heard from was um we heard from the chief nurse um and and what nursing means to her we also heard from Tara the nurse of the year and the fantastic career she's had and this currently being that nurse of the year and, and the opportunities that's that's had. But um, key to this session was to hear from students, the people who are actually on the courses at the moment, telling us that actually they've done the right thing, how they got onto the courses. And I think from, from, from the guys you heard that are students currently, 
and, and some of the other presenters, that whole piece about do your research, understand what you're you're going for, make sure that you're, you know, it is for you, you're commit, committed to that, because that will come through the rest of the process that that you put forward from your application and, and giving examples about, you know, what why you want to be a nurse what experience you've got, what that resulted in was so, so clear. And the other big tip I think has come through very much so is about the open days. Go to the open days, understand, meet with the lecturers. And I think Zoe's uh, story about actually when she went into the interview room, the lecturer remembered her was was absolutely brilliant because it just helps that whole process and 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 to you getting the best out of yourself because you'll you'll be more relaxed as that as well so um i think you know we had those what it's like to be a nurse from the, from their perspective and a student nurse right at the beginning we've busted some myths around the experience what you need academically how you can access some of the programs in very different ways not the tradi not necessarily the traditional three years september to uh, three years um, academic courses in university, but there's lots of other routes as well. And also going right through to Martin talked about the dispersed learning, which is a totally new method and very, very flexible. And, you know, we're developing um, different methods all of the time um, because we want people to learn in Wales. We want people to stay in Wales um, and we want uh, people to become nurses. And um, I think um, the, the the takeaways for me uh, we heard that um, nursing is a safety critical pro profession. There's lots of opportunities for digital and tech and AI. Nurses are innovators. Yes, they're caring. Yes, they're compassionate, but really pushing the boundaries of of medicine in in the, in terms of um, you know that sort of nursing component to the way we deliver cut deliver care. And for for you on this on this call today, I think you know. Have a think about is this career um, for you? Do you want to be in one of the most respected professions in the world? Do you want to be part of that nursing community? You will be the start at the start of people's lives. You will be at the end of people's lives. It is a privilege to be a nurse. It is a privilege to share in those really key moments in, in people's lives. And, and Sue talked about nursing opening the door to the world and, and what that means for her and I think you know whatever you choose I hope this has been really helpful in helping you make up your mind or to give you more information um, we are here drop us a line we will try our best to get back to you as soon as we possibly can but I think the other thing about the NHS in particular it's one massive family. There's about 120,000 people in the NHS family in Wales. And we do call it a family, believe it or not. Um, you know, come and join our family. Just do it. So all the best. I hope to see some of you, a lot of you in nursing courses over the next year or two. It would be fantastic for, you know, to hear your story. So if you do get in and you have um this has helped you make your decisions, please drop us a line because we'd love to hear from you and we'd love to follow your careers. So uh, thank you very, very much. Uh, and like I say, thank you for attending. Thanks for giving your time to come and, and join today. You will be able to um, watch the recording of this uh, over the next few days. We'll put it up, put it up. So um, have a lovely rest of the evening, everybody. Thank you very much. And I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Right, thanks very much. Yeah. Bye.